Hi everyone, welcome to the vlog of Erica F. Shore. It's at time of day again. Um, today I am actually doing a review of the TV miniseries that was in BBC, on the BBC called Gunpowder, Treason, and Plot. It is a two-part miniseries. Each episode was about two hours long, give or take. And it is the story of uh, Mary, Queen of Scots, and her son, King James I. It, the first episode is all about Mary, and it starts off with her coming to Scotland shortly after the death of her mother. And the woman who plays uh, Mary, Queen of Scots, by the way, I'll be going back and forth between looking at this and my computer to make sure I get all the details right. Um, the woman who plays Mary is Clemence Posey. Um, many of you are wondering, who the hell is that? That would be the actress who played Fleur de la Cour in the Harry Potter films. Now, um, in the Harry Potter films, she had like a, this very minor, limited capacity in her acting. She didn't get the chance to show really how talented she actually is. And seeing her as Mary was so inspired because you get to see this wide range with Mary. From this woman who knows so little of the Scottish people. Because she was basically raised in France. And you got to see how she struggled to become Scottish. When her heart really was French. She she had I don't know if she had ever loved um, her first husband, King Francis. But there was definitely a passion for the French culture and French society. That she tried to bring to Scotland when she came. And she had to expect that France was France and Scotland was this rugged and not, not exactly um, dangerous but this new kind of cunning world and she had to quickly accept the fact that she couldn't necessarily be French in the Scottish world she had to learn how to be Scottish while keeping true to herself which I think is in a way something that we all struggle with is how do we stay true to ourselves when we have to be someone else at, at times um, but it was very interesting to see because, like I said, she get, has this nice wide range. And I got to see her as a true actress, very talented actress. And it was quite amazing. So, Clement says Mary goes from, from France to Scotland and she quickly has to discover that she that she really trusts her brother, Sir J uh, Prince, uh, no Prince, wow, um, Lord James. And you find out, without giving up out too much about him, you find out that he's really not a trustworthy guy. I mean, I personally don't know much about that particular period of British history. I know a lot about the more about Tudor history than I do about that particular era. But from what I've seen of that reign, um, Gunpowder, Treason, and Plot, the way they portrayed Mary, was much more accurate than how they portrayed her in Rain. Sorry, my iPad is being a little weird. But they portrayed her much more accurately than they do in Rain. Uh, with the fact that she was acted more naive than she did. She actually knew more than she let on. and But she definitely did not necessarily trust the Scottish people advisors in her world. She listened more to her Italian. Um, oh God, what was, the, what was his name? Uh, give me a sec, folks. She listened more to her Italian advisor. I think his name, if I'm correctly wrong, I'm, I'm double checking. His, that's what I thought. His name was David Riccaria. She had David Riccio. She trusted him the most out of everyone in her in her life when she came to Scotland, and no one liked it because all they saw was this French queen who was born Scottish, listening to an Italian, and of course she marries a a man from Britain, uh, Lord Darnley. But Lord Darnley was probably the greatest choice for her to marry, as it gave her more claim to the the English throne. Yes, technically, from Catholicism side, she was the rightful heir as opposed to Mary, not Mary, Elizabeth, as Elizabeth was the whole reason the, the English throne broke away from the Catholic Church, essentially, um, because her father, Henry VIII, wanted his, his annulment from Catherine of Aragon to marry Anne Boleyn, Elizabeth I's mother. But 
Mary was Catholic, and she always was Catholic. She played to the ideas of, especially especially Sir John uh, John Knox, the very outspoken, very influential man at the time of um, Protestantism, especially in Scot Protestant Scotland. She played to his to him, hoping to uncover his weakness while still being true to her Catholic religion. And of course, she married Lord Darnley to have a true legitimate heir to both the Scottish and English thrones. One that would not be denied, especially considering that Elizabeth was supposedly barren. Not sure, we're not entirely sure, as we know Elizabeth had lovers. And there is documentation of her going away from English court in London for periods of time, supposedly as a retreat for illness or whatever. There is some rumors that she was actually giving birth to children at the time, which is why she was escaped, uh, leaving, because she had to be seen as pure. She was the virgin queen. But because she was barren, according to gunpowder, treason, and plot, she did not give a legitimate heir, and therefore she did not want Mary to be able to give a legitimate heir. Of course, Mary was not barren. She had James I. But Lord Darnley, as history and documentation has shown us, was not a good man. He was a drunkard, and he abused his influence as King Kong swords, and he abused everything with Mary, causing the down his downfall. Now, Mary, throughout the this whole time, has a flirtation off and on with Lord Bothwell, and Lord Bothwell is played by Kevin McKidd, who most of you will know from Grey's Anatomy as Dr. Owen Hunt. He is also in the movie Train Spotting. Tom, he played Tommy, and he was also the voice in Brave of Lord MacGuffin and Young MacGuffin. And he's in Star Wars Rebels as the voice of Fen Ryu. Um, so he, he gets around a lot. He's very well known. He's got a lot of influence in the, uh, the acting community. And he's just very talented. And seeing him, this is the first time I've actually really seen him in something besides Train Spotting, and seeing him as Lord Bothwell, someone who is in love with Mary, not because she is queen, but because of who she is as a person, was inspired. Because most people, you, you're going to tell me that if you had a chance to be with a queen you, just because she was a queen, you're not going to take it? He didn't see her as just his queen. He saw her as a woman, which for that time was almost unheard of because she had to marry for, not necessarily for love. She couldn't follow her heart. She had to do what was best for Scotland. She was Scotland. So after the birth of, of James, obviously, she and Bothwell sort of started seeing each other a little bit more. And she and him eventually plot the downfall of Darnley. Which, of course, as history has shown us, was the downfall of Mary. And... Unfortunately, that's what caused a lot of strain, be strain between her, well, for her with, with James. Because she was taken to, into custody and imprisoned for the remainder of her life. She died at 44. She was executed. And she never got to see her son after maybe, her son was maybe three months old. And that was the last time she ever saw him. Now... Episode 2 of Gunpowder, Treason, and Plot opens up at the reign of King James the Sixth, Mary's son. King James is played by the absolutely amazing Robert Carlyle. Most of us will either know him from, well, most of you know him from Once Upon a Time. And Once Upon a Time, he plays Rumpelstiltskin slash Mr. Gold slash Captain Weaver. And now he, and he was also in a Train Spotting as well with Kevin McKidd. He played Begbie. And so, Robert Carlyle is an absolutely amazing, talented actor. Seeing him as King James VI of Scotland, then King James I of England, was incredible. Because he... There are things about King James I didn't know. I, I, had, I had my knowledge of King James from, uh, from Pocahontas and Pocahontas II during the New World. I didn't know much about him. I didn't realize that he was actually a sickly man. I didn't realize he had this limp and a lot of other issues and problems, which... Uh, Robert Carlyle absolutely portrays beautifully. And you get to see the side of him that's completely different. When he's Rumpelstiltskin, he's manipulative, he's intense, he's, he can be angry, but he can be sweet and kind of at the same time. And as 
King James, he was just cruel. He was almost heartless. He didn't know how to be a man, it, it seems, because he didn't get the love he deserved of a mother. Um, the people who raised him, essentially, all, all these Protestant regents and advisors and tutors essentially told him that, that his mother abandoned him. His mother didn't abandon him. She, he was taken from her. The At least that's the way they portrayed it. He was taken from her, and she was never allowed to see him, no matter how hard she tried. I mean, she, she was willing to give up her love for... Bothwell, be imprisoned for the rest of her life in a Scottish, and, and advocate her throne being imprisoned in Scot a Scottish cell, but still be able to see her son if she was allowed to, and she wasn't. Which is so so tragic for her. And for, for James, because James didn't know his, get, didn't get to know his mother. He saw women, all women, as whores. And it was interesting, inter and that's interesting because we don't, I'm not sure if he was gay or homosexual by the fact that he actually was or if it was by choice. I think there was a part of it that was by choice since he became so close with men throughout his life. And he, and he only trusted men. He didn't really trust women. And that is seen with his first meeting with um, the woman who became his wife, Queen Anne of Denmark. And he said, he told her, he told her up front as soon as we have enough children, you can go and take a lover. I don't care. Just as long as you are discreet. And it was, it's sad that he, he felt he had to do that. But what's interesting about that at the same time, though, is that James seemed to be man easily manipulated by both Anne and Sir William Cecil. And Cecil, I believe, was, um, from the, at least for this portrayal, was more in it for himself. He was trying to use the king's power to create his own power. Whereas Anne, at least, whatever she did was not necessarily for power, but for the protection of her own children, which is what something any mother would do. Now, also in this cast, which is absolutely fantastic, you have um, Tim McKimmy, McKinney, who was in Game of Thrones as uh, Robert Glover in Gunpowder Treason and uh, Plot. He played, uh, give me a sec, um, he actually played Cecil, and he's also, he was just fantastic in it. There's really no other way to describe it. He had this manipulative, um, way about him. Uh, oh, uh, Sam Trafton was in it. He was in Alien vs. Predator, AVP Alien vs. Predator. He played Tom Part. Uh, in this, he plays Gunpowder, Treason, and Plots. He's also much in Robin Hood, BBC's Robin Hood. And he, it was a much interesting different role because in Robin Hood, which is what I've really seen him in, he wasn't subservient, but he wasn't bold the way he is in, uh, in Gunpowder, Treason, and Plot because in this sh miniseries, he does whatever he can to impress this woman um, Lady Margaret. Lady Margaret was played by Amelia Fox, who plays more ghosts in BBC's Merlin. And she also played uh, Georgiana Darcy in Pride and Prejudice in, in uh, 1995 with Colin Firth, who, is, as we know, is Mr. Darcy. But the surprise that I saw in this show, in the way of actors, was Michael Fassenbender, who we all know from uh, 12 Years a Slave, uh, Inglorious Bastards, um, and so much more. Uh, He's Prometheus, X Men. Currently, he plays Magneto. Uh, Steve Jobs. He was Steve Jobs. Um, he is in this. He played. Uh, he in Gunpowder. He played the legendary Guy Fox. He was the one that started this whole plot, this whole treason, this whole. Remember, remember the fifth of November. I mean, he was legendary. And he was ready to, and he tried to blow up Parliament, all for the sake of Catholic tolerance. Which, of course, was what caused the end of Catholic tolerance for King James. And without giving it all away, because you guys should watch it. It was a miniseries in 2004. It's currently on Netflix. I mean, the performances in this were inspired. And it makes you really want to learn more about 
Mary, Queen of Scots, and King James. And it was, it's definitely a worthwhile show to, to go watch. All right. Go watch it, guys. <laughs>